Welcome to Crossroads Online. My name is Jesse Golnick, and I'm so excited that you have decided to start your new year off right here with us. And I love that we started 2021 by listening to the song that we just heard, Keep Your Head Up by pop star Andy Grammer. Today, we kick off a brand new series called Keeping It Together. And it's all about us keeping our heads up in the midst of this new year. And I'm excited because it's gonna be inspiring and it's gonna be powerful in our lives. And this week, week one, our lead pastor, Phil Print, is gonna be bringing the word. But before we get to that, we're gonna do something that we do every single week here. And that's singing praises to our God who's with us through every battle and in every season. So where you're, wherever you're at, Happy New Year, and let's sing together. All right, what's up, church? We're gonna worship our Heavenly Father now. I wanna invite you to sing out with us. Here we go. When all I see is your battle, you see my victory.
that today together that you are our hope our hope is found in you God our joy is found in you our comfort is found in you our peace found in you God we praise you for that together today we love you Lord it's in your name that we pray amen church amen amen in that last song that we just heard, it talks about the unimaginable amount of hope that we have in Jesus and how that hope is a part of our everyday life. And over the past couple months here at Crossroads, we've been talking about a new initiative that we started called Give Hope. And it's all about bringing hope into our world that needs it so deeply. And we've partnered with an organization called Home of Hope. And this organization exists to get women out of the human trafficking or world and to then give them hope and give them dignity that's been taken away and then to partner with them as they transition into their new lives. And we're excited as we partner with them. And actually this past week, Pastor Phil sat down and had a conversation with a woman named Priya. And she serves with these women over in India. And they had a conversation about her everyday experience with this organization. So let's take a look at this. Hi, Crossroads Church, Pastor Phil here, and I am with Priya today, and uh, just honored to have her all the way from India, uh, home of hope. Uh, we're, we're delighted that you're with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're about 7,900 miles away from each other, but we're connected via the internet and via a common interest in helping people. And you're part of Home of Hope. Tell us, Priya, just briefly, what does Home of Hope do? Well, uh, Home of Hope basically uh, re rescues ladies from the red light district. And as the name suggests, it's a home for them. So we give them a family environment, which was missing for several years. And if the, the women have some children with them, so even they are rescued, and we don't want the children to be vulnerable to society there. So even they are rescued. Home of Hope not just rescues them, but also provides them training so that they are able to stand on their feet and earn from themselves and have a dignified life, not just for themselves, but also for their families. That is amazing. So we are applauding you uh, all these miles away for this uh, unbelievable ministry. What, what would happen, and you have had a front row seat, what would happen if Home of Hope didn't have the funding for this year? So this year, if Home of Hope doesn't have the funding, unfortunately, we will not be able to rescue some of the ladies who are waiting to be rescued, some of the ladies who are ready to be free, who are waiting for us. Um, they will also lose hope. They will also leave, you know, lose trust on NGOs who are, you know, rescuing them. 
but for the ladies that have already been rescued trust me they have had an impactful life they've had an impactful training and they've they're able to stand on their feet and work outside the red light district and have a very good uh, life for themselves thank you hey uh, could you share a story with us of maybe a life that has been changed somewhat yes um there was this girl called uh, Triveni and changing her name because we don't want to reveal the identity so when she was 12 years old she was abused by her maternal uncle and uh, she was found to be pregnant but uh, her maternal aunt came to her rescue and uh, but later on this aunt went ahead and sold her to the red light district and um, this this was very sad because uh, she was a maternal aunt and uh, she was uh, supposed to have this good relationship with her and she's the one who sold her this girl was completely shattered and lost trust in anyone her parents were told that she's staying in a dormitory and so they really didn't bother to you know look for her uh, after a few years um, we got uh, we got through our social workers we got in contact with Triveni and Triveni was counseled and uh, we spoke to her many times and we built the trust that we are there for you and we are going to rescue you it took us several sessions and finally Triveni was rescued and she she was given a, a nursing training and through this training now Triveni is earning very well and she also has a dignified life Thank you so much for sharing that story. And I know that's just one of many, 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 many stories. And that's why we as a church, uh, again, almost 8,000 miles away, uh, we are honored to partner with you, with Home of Hope, uh, in this amazing ministry of, of rescue and redemption. So uh, we're just saying to you, uh, way to go. Keep up the good work. Uh, funding is coming. I know Crossroads Church well. I know that this uh, Sunday we will uh, go over the top of what we need to support this wonderful ministry. So God bless you. Uh, we're not just sending money. We're sending our prayers with you as well. And uh, tell all the people involved uh, that we're honored to partner with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for all the blessings, for all the prayers. And I know it's a difficult time. It's the COVID situation. And uh, I know how difficult it is for you all to uh, share your funds with us. But um, thank you. A very big thank you from all of us, from Home of Hope and from Hindustani Government Church. It's our honor. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Crossroads, it's because of your generosity that we're able to bring hope to a world that needs it. And we are so excited to partner with Home of Hope. And we are so close to reaching our goal to fully fund them for 2021. So 10% of our offering today is gonna go directly to that. And if you'd like to give today, there are several ways that you can give to further our mission for one more person in one more place to meet and be changed by Jesus. And so you can go to cr.life and click the Give tab to give safely and securely through there. We also have an app called Crossroads MN. You can give through there. Or if you'd like to mail in your generosity, there is an address below that you can send that to. But we just want to thank you. Thank you so much for being a generous church. And as we're here in this new year of 2021, we want to help you to get further connected into our community. So we've created two super fun experiences that you can join us in. And the first one is Starting Point. It's a really great place for those of you that are new or newer to Crossroads to start. And um, so what Starting Point is, it's kicking off January 10th, um, either in person or online. And um, you're going to come in, meet some friendly faces and learn the mission as well as the beliefs that we have as a church and so you can go to cr.life and click our events tab for that one and our second one is called connections and that's what it's all about is connecting connecting to the incredible people that we have at crossroads because we have incredible people just like you and so we would love to help you get connected into those people and so connections is a three-week experience where you get to come in meet some new people and we get to talk we share stories about faith and then take things a little bit further and, and and make genuine friendships and walk away with really great connections. And so we have an online as well as an in-person
just an option for that. And we would love to see you there. Really, we would love you to join for both of those experiences, but we are so thankful that you are here today with us. And we are kicking off week one of our new series, Keeping It Together. And Pastor Phil, our lead pastor, has an incredible message. I think that is really something you and I, I think everybody can relate to. And so we're excited about that. But before we do that, I want you to lean in and listen to this.
I am so grateful that Taylor Swift wrote a song that encapsulates, that summarizes this year that we have just gotten through. And she does it in such an elegant and eloquent way. It's as if she's writing that song, staring out a window, watching the year 2020 slowly, and might I add, painfully go by. And some of the lyrics in that song raise some really amazing questions like, will this season of winter ever be done? Or will I ever catch my breath? Or will my life ever get off pause? Or, and this is probably a big one for many of us, will the pain I feel right now last, and here's the name of the song, forevermore? Those are all, those are all questions that, that look ahead. Those are all questions that are, that are future Focused, and they're all questions in this song. The reason why we picked this song is because it introduces our theme, our subject for today as we kick off this brand new series. And the topic today is worry. And worry is all about the future, worry is all about tomorrow. Worry is all about surfacing a question over and over and over and over again. And the question that worry raises is this question right here. What if? What if? This is the question of worry. And as you think about your life, as you think about entering into 2021, whatever that means for you, let me just ask you, what are your what if questions? Or what is your big what if question? And may, maybe they're, they're trivial, like will the Vikings lose to the lowly lions today? Or Will I pass gas in public like I sometimes do at home? Or will I post something on social media and no one will mention or no one will like or no one will comment? I mean, come on. Those are very trivial kinds of what-if questions. But, but what if? What if your what-if questions are more like, what if I get COVID <clears throat> really bad? And what if all, all the hospital beds in the ICU are all full? And what if I need a, a ventilator? And what if none of them are available? Or what if I lose my job? And well, what, if I, uh, what if I can't feed my family? What if I can't afford rent or mortgage payments? Or what if, what if my son or what if my daughter, what, what if my kids... Never give God a chance in their lives. Or what if my adult children, my son or my daughter, what if they walk away from their faith? Or what if, what if, what if there's another pandemic in 20, 2021 coming our way that's going to disrupt our lives like this one did in 2020 and we keep reliving the year 2020 all over again? And what makes those questions, those what-if questions so hard is they're so out there in the future. And the future is so uncertain. And that's why worry is so common. That, that's why worry is so widespread. I mean, because the future is so uncertain. And all those what-if qu questions are so uncertain. I mean, come on, think about it. Think about a year ago. A year ago, no one saw COVID-19 shutting the world down. No one did. You see, here's the thing about worry. Worry is chasing after things you can't do anything about. And there's certain things in life we can do things about, but what worry is all about is focusing our attention. It's chasing after those things that we really have no control of, but we keep chasing after them, don't we? And we are a nation of chasers. We, we are a nation of worriers. We lead, we lead the world, the United States of America does, in anxiety and in worry. And the problem is this, when you keep chasing after those things that you really have no control over, when you keep asking and surfacing the what-if questions over and over and over and over again, guess what happens? You give worry a key to your home. You allow worry to come into your life and into your home, and you give, you give worry the guest room. And you, 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 give worry, you give worry a key and the, the, the garage door code and you, you start feeding worry and you start doing worry's laundry and worry doesn't go anywhere. And some of you know this all too well, what worry does to you, it wrecks you. It wrecks you physically, it wrecks you emotionally, it wrecks you spiritually, it wrecks you relationally. And that's why as you read through the New Testament, 
That's why Jesus and other authors in the New Testament talk about worry so much because of the way it wrecks us. And today, I want us to look at what Jesus himself said about worry. And let me just give you a little spoiler alert clue here. He's not a big fan of it. But before we look and see what Jesus said about worry, let me go to the New Testament word for worry. When the writers of the New Testament talk about worry, what, what are they talking about? Well, the, the word in the original language of the New Testament, which is Greek, is this word right here, merimnao. It's actually made up of two Greek words, mariso, which means to divide, and naos, which means the mind. So, so what is worry? Worry is simply this. It's a divided or a distracted mind. Worry splits our energy between today's priorities, which are important, and tomorrow's possibilities, tomorrow's possible problems. Half of my mind is working on today. The other half is worrying about what might happen. Underline the word might, what might happen tomorrow. And maybe as you look that over, you're wondering to yourself, okay, what's the problem with that? Half my mind is working on today, and the other half of my mind is worrying about what might happen tomorrow. Well, I'm going to let Jesus answer the what's wrong with that question. But let me just, first of all, just say something to you to keep you engaged, okay? Let me just say, if you hang in here with me today, and I'm worried that some of you won't, but if you stay here with me today and stay, stay tuned in here, I believe that you will be able to worry less in 2021. In fact, I'm going to go out and say this. I'm going to step on a limb here. I'm going to say this. I believe you'll be able to worry not, like worry not at all in 2021. So let's get right to it. If you have a Bible, you want to open up Matthew chapter 6. Or to get right to Jesus' teaching about worry. And here it is here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Jesus speaking says, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or everyday clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? And right off the bat, Jesus is like, hey, don't, don't worry about your life. And to that, maybe you're saying right now, Really, Jesus? That's all you got? Don't worry about your life? I've got to worry about my life. Somebody has to worry about my life. If I don't worry about my life, no one's going to worry about my life. And and Jesus isn't the only one saying, don't worry about your life. The Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament, he comes along, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and he says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. And maybe you're thinking right now, this is why I don't really read the Bible. I mean, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about anything. You might as well just say to me, don't worry, be happy. I mean, those are nice. They sound good on paper. They they fit well on a t-shirt or a coffee mug. But you know, Pastor Phil, they don't really work in the real world. So, you know, I think I'll just, I just think I'll just pass. And I get the tension. I really do. Uh, maybe, I'll just throw it out there, maybe Jesus and Paul and the others who write in the New Testament about worry, maybe they were a bit naive. Or maybe Jesus and Paul, writing in the first century world, had no idea what life was going to be like for you and me in the 21st century America. Or, Maybe Jesus and the rest of these authors of the New Testament, maybe they knew something that we don't know. Could that be true? Might they know something that we don't know? Or might they know something that we maybe need to be reminded of? With that kind of dangling in front of us, I want to get right to the teaching. Go back to Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Uh, Back to the top. Look at the birds, Jesus says, to which you say, are you kidding me? Who has time to look at birds? That's that's like what old people do. That's what Pastor Phil's going to do when he retires. He's just going to sit and look out the window and look at birds all day long. Now, Thank you for thinking of me. 
Um, but you need to keep in mind here that what Jesus is doing is, I'll, I'll model, he's walking with his disciples and he's teaching them as he's walking. And they're outside. He's talking about worry. And my, my bed is, a sparrow flew by. He said, look at the birds. And there's a few verses later, he says, look at the wildflowers because there's probably some wildflowers over here. He points to the birds and he points to the wildflowers. And my question to you is, what's the point? Why does Jesus point at birds and why does Jesus point at the wildflowers? And the answer is, he's using a lesser than to a greater than kind of an argument. He's saying, hey, hey, don't you know that your heavenly father cares for birds and he cares for wildflowers? Don't you know that? And you are far more valuable to him than birds and wildflowers. Don't you know that? You are the pinnacle of creation. You, human being, are made in the image of God. And if he cares for birds and he cares for wildflowers, come on. You are so much more valuable to him. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? And then he goes on in verse 30, and he says, And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow. Now, what's that all about? Let me just pause here. These wildflowers he's talking about, when they, when they died, they would dry up and they would crumble them up and they would use them as fire starters. And he's saying, if God cares so wonderfully for these wildflowers that are used to start fires, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? What's he saying? He's saying simply this. You are a billion times more important to God than birds or wildflowers. Don't you know that? And then he gives us another don't you know that in verse 27 here where he says, can all your worries, can all your worries at a single moment to your life? Have you ever thought about that? Have you, have you ever thought about worry and what it does for you? And maybe you haven't. Maybe I haven't. We worry a lot. Have we ever thought about worry does, what it does for us? Because the answer is nothing. Worry does nothing for us. It certainly does something to us though, right? It distracts. It divides our minds. It wrecks us emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally. And Jesus is saying, don't you understand that? Don't you understand that worry does nothing for you? You see, all I do, here, here, here's what I wrote for you. All I do when I worry is I drag tomorrow into today, which is counterproductive. I can do something about today, but I do nothing when I worry about tomorrow. I hope, friends, I hope you're caffeinated enough to grasp this that when I worry, I am wasting energy. When I worry, I'm wasting time. I could be doing something with that energy and time to make today better and to prepare for tomorrow. But if I worry, I'm wasting it all. Worry is a waste. All worry is is stewing without doing. And Jesus says, come on, don't you know that that's not smart? That's not what you should be doing. And then he goes on in verse 31 and says, so don't worry about these things. Saying, what will we wear? What will we drink? Or what will we eat? And I would just say right here, maybe some of you are looking at this going, okay, I don't worry about those things. I don't worry about what I eat. I don't worry about what I wear. I don't worry about what I drink. And I would say, maybe we should a little bit. And maybe we should worry just a little bit about what we drink and what we eat, the one saying this being addicted to donuts. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, we should worry a little bit about what we wear when we're in public. May I just say a word? Maybe we should worry a little bit about what we wear when we walk into Walmart. What is it about Walmart that makes people dress like, <laughs> like that or like that or like that. We could do this all day, by the way, but that's enough, right? But on a more serious note here, Jesus is talking to people when he says, hey, don't worry about those things. He's talking to people 
who we would associate today, they were like living in a third world country. These people lived day to day. Most of them were common day laborers. They, they would work a day, they would get paid so they could go and buy food for their family. And they couldn't rely on a government or handouts. And Jesus is saying to them, don't worry about these things tomorrow. What you're going to eat or what you're going to wear or what you're going to drink. And, and friends, this was huge for him to say that. And then talk about huge, look what he says next. He says, these things, worrying about tomorrow... Dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Now, right here, we're going to park. We're just going to park here for a moment because there's so much in these couple of verses right here. What does Jesus know that we need to know? And here's the answer. Don't miss it. It's right here. What Jesus knows that he wants us to know is that the Father knows. The Father in heaven knows. What does he know? He knows what we need today. And he knows what we need tomorrow. In fact, he's already waiting for us in tomorrow. He's not bound by time or space. God the Father is already in tomorrow. He already knows what you need And on top of all of that, look at the verse again. Look at the verse again. If we seek him first, what does he promise? You reading it? He promises that he will give us everything we need. Wow. What does Jesus know that we need to know? That the Father knows. He already knows what you need today. He already knows what you need tomorrow. He cares. He cares. He promises if you put him first, that he will reward you. Unlike worry, which will rob you, God the Father will reward you if you trust him. If you seek him above all others. And Jesus is so blunt here. He says worry is what unbelievers do. And I don't know about you, but as I wrote that down and as I think about that right now, it's convicting, isn't it? If you're a follower of Jesus, if you've put God first in your life, you're not supposed to worry. Worry is not supposed to be what you do. It's what unbelievers do. Why do unbelievers worry? Because they don't know. They don't know what we now know, that God knows and that God cares and that God promises to take care of our every need today and our every need tomorrow. They don't know that. Unbelievers don't know that. And that's why unbelievers worry. And if we're a follower of Jesus and we're worrying, what does that say about us? I think what it says about us is that we're not trusting God because worry is a trust issue. Worry says, God, I'm not trusting you. I'm going to put my faith and my hope in worry. And good luck with that. See, if I had to summarize today's teaching in just a single sentence, it would be this right here. When you know what Jesus knows, you can say no to worry. When you know what Jesus knows, and now you know what Jesus knows, that the Father knows, that the Father cares, and the Father's going to be there for you in the future. He's already waiting for you in the future. When you know what Jesus knows, you can say no to worry. Will that mean, does that mean I'll never, ever, 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 ever worry again? No, 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 no. The presence of worry, that's somewhat unavoidable. But the prison of worry, totally optional. Totally optional. And speaking of the prison of worry, maybe you've heard about the guy, this guy, who was a prisoner to worry. He worried day and night. I mean, he just was the most anxious, worrisome guy on the planet. And he sees an ad in the paper, an ad that says, I will worry for you. 
I will do all of your worrying for you in the new year. Every single worry, 365 days, 24 seven, I will take all your worries for the next year for $200,000. And the guy was like intrigued. I mean, he, he was worrying all the time. So he said, I'm gonna go for it. Picked up his phone, called the number. And a lady answered, he said, is this legit? Are you like, is this, is this, you will really take all of my worries from me for the next 365 days? And the lady said, yep, absolutely. I will worry for you for the next year for $200,000. He said, okay. Thought about it for a moment. He said, you're hired. You're hired. I'm signing up. And she said, great. Now, how are you going to pay me my money? And he said, that's your worry. Boom. <laughs> now, let me just say something to you. Look, look at me. Look at me. Lean in a little bit right now, all right? Here's the deal, friends. If you have said yes to Jesus Christ, if you have entered into a relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, hear me now. Worrying is no longer your business. It's God's business. You no longer have to hang on to those worries. You no longer have to ask, what if, what if, what if, what if? Because your Father in heaven has you covered from this day forward. Worrying is no longer your business. He's got you. He's already waiting for you tomorrow. He cares about you and he's promised you that he will meet your every need so you can walk away from worry. Now, <clears throat> I've, got a, I've got a little exercise for you. I have a, something I want you to do. And if you can just kind of check the little box here. I want you, and here's the exercise. I want you to find a box. It can be little, it can be big or somewhere in between. And I want you to get a marker out and I want you to write down my trusting God box. And for the next seven days, seven days, what I want you to do after you've made your little box is I want you every single time you start to grab on and just start worrying and worrying, what if, what if, what if, whatever it might be, whatever that worry is, I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you just simply to write down whatever that worry is. And then I want you to take that after you've written down what it is and I want you to do this. I want you to put it into your My Trusting God box. And as you put that worry in that box, I want you to say, I'm done worrying about that because God, that's now your worry. I am trusting you. And then what do you do? And then you walk away from whatever that is and you take your time and your energy and you focus on today. You focus on today. Now, what happens, because it's probably going to happen, what happens when you walk away and say, God, I'm giving you this, but all of a sudden you start worrying about it again? Well, go back to the box, take the piece of paper out, read it over, shake your head and say, wait a minute, this isn't my worry. I gave this to God. I'm giving this to God again. Put it back in the I'm trusting God box and walk away. And do this as long as it takes for you to finally get into your brain that you don't have to walk around with these worries any longer. Because God has promised to take care of you. He's promised to take care of you. Now, why, why do I have to do something like this, Pastor Phil? And the reason why is because we've allowed worry to come into our homes, into our lives, unpack its bags. We've given it a guest room. We have fed it. We have done its laundry. And the only way it's going to leave is if we evict it. Worry must be evicted. And that's what it's all about. That's why you need to write it down. And as you hand it over to God, you are evicting worry from your life. It's no longer yours. It's God's business. 
And if you want a verse to memorize for 2021, here it is right here. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because He cares about you. Give all your worries and cares to God. Why? Because He cares for you. And life is so much better. It's so much better without worry. And the good news as we move into this new year is you can worry less, no doubt about it. But the better news is you can actually worry not. You see, when you know what Jesus knows, you can say no to worry. And my prayer for you is that you will. Instead of trusting worry, trust God. Trust God. Because He knows already what you need. He cares about you. And He's promised that if you'll put Him first, He will take care of you. So, let's practice this together right now. Let's practice living that verse out from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Let's, let's practice giving our worries right now over to God as we bow our heads and as we close our eyes. Bow with me, would you? What would you write down in that piece of paper? What, what, what is it that you're worrying about as we, as we find ourselves in this new year? What is it? What has been dividing or distracting your mind and your attention? Whatever that is, whatever that is, I want you to take that worry right now and I want you to say these words in your heart. I, I want you to say, Father God, thank you for caring for me. And right now, Father God, I give you my worry. I give you my concerns. I am burdening you with what burdens me. I trust you, God, to take care of and you tell him what your worry is. I trust you, God, to take care of and give it to him. Give it to him. Father God, thank you so much that we are a billion times more valuable to you than birds or flowers. Thank you. Thank you for already knowing what our needs are, even tomorrow. Thank you, Father God, for already being in our tomorrow and waiting for us there. Thank you for your promise to take care of us. And God, my prayer for me and everyone listening to this today is that we would trust you in this new year. Help us to put you first and help, help us to leave all of our concerns and worries. Help us to leave them in your competent hands, we pray together. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to say thank you for joining us today and for all of us, all of us on staff at Crossroads Church. What I want to say on behalf of all of our staff is simply this. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. May God bless you and may you worry less and may you even worry not this new year.